thanks for watching and welcome to the second part of the Gaussian integral where this time I won't really use multivariable calculus to calculate the Gaussian integral. I will use a simple U substitution. And again, before I forget, I would like to thank Keith Conrad for coming up with those amazing notes and finding 12 ways of calculating the Gaussian integral. So now, method number two, using U sub. So this time, let J be the integral from zero to infinity of e of negative x squared dx. And you'll see soon why we would have to do integral from zero to infinity. If you want the integral from minus infinity to infinity, just multiply by two. And the only multivariable we need here is simply to notice that this equals to the integral from zero to infinity of e of negative y squared dy. And then, just as usual, let's do the spiel, or let, let's do the trick of writing j squared as jj as integral from 0 to infinity e of negative x squared dx. Integral from 0 to infinity of negative y squared dy. And as usual, you know, by the Fubini trick, this equals to the integral from 0 to infinity of the integral from 0 to infinity of e of negative x squared, negative y squared, dx dy. So all I did, I pulled this inside the integral and possibly, yeah, and I put maybe e of negative y squared inside. Now, before what we did, we used pure multivariable calculus. We just used polar coordinates to simplify it. But now let's do something else. Let's do a U substitution. So let U be simply X over Y. And not U, let's call it T. Why not? So let T be X over Y. So in other words, x is yt, then, you know, if you want dx is y dt, you see we let x be yt, so we want to write dx in terms of dt, and then what we want to do, we want to plug in the endpoints, so in this case, let's see, if x is 0, then 0 equals to yt, and in that interval, well, y is positive, so the only way this would work is if t equals to 0. So a new endpoint becomes t equals to 0. And by the way, this is why we did the integral from 0 to infinity, and not the integral from negative infinity to infinity. Otherwise, it would have been more complicated with the signs of x and y. Next thing, we want to plug infinity. So we did zero, we want to plug infinity. So infinity is yt. And in that interval, y is finite. It's between, strictly between zero and infinity. So the only way this would work is if t equals to infinity. Very good. So those are our three steps of the substitution. And now we just want to substitute this integral. So, j squared equals to this integral from 0 to infinity, something dy. And now with t, so our new endpoints are still 0 and infinity. So, e of negative, so x is yt, so y squared t squared. And negative y squared and y dt which if you like, you can rewrite as integral from zero to infinity, integral from zero to infinity of e of, let's say, negative y squared, t squared plus one, and then uh, y dt dy, or if you want dy dt. So let's use a little Fubini trick for this. And the nice thing is, well, even though e of negative x squared doesn't have an antiderivative which can be expressed in terms of elementary functions, 
This thing does because if you want the derivative of y squared, uh, t squared plus 1 is 2y. So we have this y and t squared plus 1, which in this case becomes a constant. So, in other words, we still have integral from 0 to infinity of dt, but the other one is just e of minus y squared t squared plus 1. Well, the derivative of minus y squared t squared plus 1 with respect to y is minus 2y times t squared plus 1. So the only extraneous factors are minus 2 and then t squared plus 1. And you do it from y equals to 0 to y equals to infinity. And let's see what that becomes. So integral from 0 to infinity. As y goes to infinity, no matter what t is, this becomes in negative infinity. So 0. Okay. And minus, which becomes plus here, e of 0 squared, which becomes e of 0, which is 1. So in, in the end, you get 1 over 2, t squared plus 1, dt. And lo and behold, this is an integral that we can evaluate, and it's just arctangent. So this becomes one half arctangent of t from zero to infinity. And then, so arctangent of infinity is pi over two, so we get one half times pi over two. Arctangent of zero is zero. Because the only, only easy number which makes tangent 0 is 0. And in the end, we get pi over 4. So in the end, what did we find? We found that j squared equals to pi over 4. And again, because um, j is positive, again, this is an integral of a positive function, we get j is just square root of pi. square root of pi over 2. So square root of pi over 4, which is square root of pi over 2. And if you want to have the integral over the whole real line, you just multiply this by 2, and we get you know, the whole integral is just square root of pi. So I think it's very cute. It's just another way of doing it, but without polar coordinates. And there are 10 other ways of doing it. So just stick around. And if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.